dear student welcome to nptel 2 video program on geosynthetics engineering in theory and practice this lecture number 25 my name is professor j n mandal department of civil engineering Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay, Mumbai, India. This module 5, lecture 25, Geosynthetics in Pavement. I will now focus recap of the previous lecture. We covered the Excel program, design method of geosynthetics reinforced flexible air field pavement, Barenberg design method. Federal Aviation Administration FAA design method and its modification, combination of Barenberg and modified FAA method. Then pavement overlay, modes of crack propagation, geosynthetics for pavement overlay, track coat and construction of overlay. Now I will address open graded asphalt concrete for mitigation of reflection cracking. You know because of reflection cracking the old distressed plain cement concrete as well as flexible pavement is rehabilitated year after year conventionally by laying asphalt concrete overlay. Reflection cracking is defined as the fracture in newly laid overlay that reflect the crack or the joint pattern in the underlying soil of old road bases. You can see here that reflection cracking is asphalt concrete overlay and this is the existing the pavement and this is asphalt concrete overlay on the top of the existing pavement and there is a formation of the crack. You can see reflection crack has occurred here and this is the joint or the crack. So, this figure so reflection cracking is in asphalt concrete overlay. Most of the time you can observe the different types of the cracking pattern in a concrete overlay. Now, the Bosnia and Arnold 2006 developed this equipment for the asphalt concrete slab fatigue testing and this is the aluminum frame pasted on the top of the surface as overlay as a test slab. This, this, is the, this is the slab and there is a pressure plate and this is the cyclic loading is to be applied to this and this is the potentiometer and here this machine act as a pull and the push the rod you can see pull and the push the rod. So, this is this this black one which is asphalt concrete slab and from this test we have obtained some result which we will we'll discuss in this course. So, here is the figure which show the designated aggregate gradation for open gated asphalt concrete. This curve shows the cumulative passing in percentage versus the sheep size in millimeter and you can see here that what is the investigator design gradation curve which is matching almost with the MOR T and H 2001 and Nagata ETL 1996 
and Nataraj ATL 2000. So, this gradation is very important that means, aggregate gradation for the open gated asphalt concrete is important. It should be lies within this range which we can see as for the most 201 specification. Now, geosynthetic reinforcing material that is spread fiber, polyester woven geotextile, glass grid, polyester geogrid was used in this experiment. So, in this experiment different types of the geogrid either in the form of the woven or in the form of geogrid or in the form of the fiber have been introduced and then we have conducted the test. Here we are focusing some of the behavior of the material. Then the tensile strength of the PET fiber is in the range of 509 kPa to 755 kPa. Polyester woven geotextile is 186.6 kilo Newton per meter, glass grid 50 kilo Newton per meter, polyester geogrid 70 kilo Newton per meter. The elongation at break for polyester woven geotextile, glass grid and polyester geogrid were 33 percentage, 5 percentage and 19 percentage respectively. You can see in case of the glass grid that elongation is very less, it is almost the 5 percentage. On the other hand, polyester woven geotextile, the elongation is more about 33 percentage and polyester geogrid about 19 percentage, which generally lies between the 10 to 15 percentage. Though tensile strength of the glass grid is less, its stiffness is 3 times more than the polyester geogrid material. Now, for geosynthetic reinforced open graded asphalt concrete, which we designated here OGAC overlay, the base course of the open graded asphalt concrete is reinforced by mixing the 0.5 percent pet fiber or 500 millimeter into 400 millimeter reinforced interlayer of polyester open geotextile or glass grid or polyester geogrid is placed between the base course of the open gated asphalt concrete and surface course of bituminous concrete or which we call BC. Now, here is shown the designation detail of the test slab. We have prepared the slab and that test slab designated as DBM and that different types of the testing mode. It may be the O indicate the opening mode, M indicate the mix mode. So, DBM, DBM that means dense bituminous macadam, here is the open, open mode and the type of the asphalt concrete base course is unreinforced DBM. Also DBM M, it is a mix mode and testing mode is M and it also performs the test unenforced drain material mechanism with the DBM. And then that OGO, this is the grid open graded, open graded and also the opening mode and open gated also the mix mode. So, this also open gated asphalt concrete and open gated asphalt concrete either in the open mode and the opening mode or the mix mode. Similarly, P E T F, P E T F is the pet fiber. So, pet fiber also in the open mode and also the mix mode. So, this is the reinforce with the OGAC open gated asphalt concrete. 
Similarly, polyester woven geotextile grade reinforced with OGSC, polyester woven geotextile grade reinforced with OGSC either in the open graded or mixed mode. Glass grid also reinforced with OGSC is the open grid, glass grid reinforced with OGSC with the mixed mode. So, polyester geogrid, geogrid reinforced with OGSC in the open mode and polyester geogrid reinforced OGSC with the mixed mode. So, these are the different types of the test, different types of the mode and the different types of the geosynthetic material have been used and performed the test. So, here you can see that unenforced dense bitumen macadam or open gated asphalt concrete overlay test slab. This is about 500 millimeter to 400 millimeter and no interlayer. This is the base course of DBM or and OGAC and this is the surface course of BC. And this thickness about 50 millimeter base course and surface course is 25 millimeter. So, here unenforced dense between macadam or the open graded asphalt concrete overlay test slab. Next, the reinforced open graded asphalt concrete overlay test slab. The same what we have used the open geotextile on glass grid and the geogrid material. So, this also thickness 50 millimeter and this interlayer here we have introduced the open geotextile or glass grid or the geogrid. Whereas, here in case of unenforced there is no interlayer and then we have performed the test. Now, you can observe that loading wave from in purely opening mode of displacement and mode of displacement. Here you can see that loading in the wave form, this is the displacement, this is millimeter and this is the one cycle, this is a load wave form in time one cycle, this may be 58 second. So, it is what is happening, it is like a pull and the push. I have shown the so, in the equipment where there is a pull and the push. So, a pull and then you can obtain the displacement about 183 millimeter and then you take the 5 second and then if you push it and then again wait for 5 second. So, this will give you the one cycle and like that you can continue like that with respect to the time to the with respect to the displacement. So, this is what you call the loading wave form and here it has been shown that this is the slab and you can see when, when it opening mode you can see that is open it move away from this crack. So, it is the opening mode and also here you can see the mixed mode that means in the mixed mode you can see there is a CR and then it moved out also that is this is the crack is here crack formation due to the CR or it may move away this then it is called the mixed mode. So, you know that what do you mean by the opening mode and what do you mean by the mixed mode. So, this is the percentage of variation in base isolation effectiveness factor of some critical parameter due to the differential deflection. So, this is overlay test slab. I mentioned that it is a DBM also that OG that OG this is open graded and then pet this is the fiber, this is the geotextile, this is the glass grid and this is the geogrid and this is open and the mixed mode. So, here you have obtained the base isolation effectiveness factor which is designated at B i e f and you can see that open mode and you can see the mixed mode in case of that how the base isolation effecting pressure is increasing also is decreasing depending upon the type of the material used. You can see in the mixed mode the glass gate is very effective, but 
in case of the geotextile it is not so effective and this is the percentage of variation of the BIEF or base isolation effectiveness factor. So, here there is some positive, there is also some negative, this positive which increase the BIEF value whereas, negative is shows the decrease in the BIEF value. So, this value also will be the useful for the design. Now, percentage of variation in fabric effectiveness factor of some of the critical parameter due to differential deflection. Here again that overlay test slab is designated here and this is the fabric effectiveness factor which is called F E F. This is again operating mode and the mix mode and here the different types of the material. This is geo grid, glass grid, geotextile, polyester, open graded and you can see that that fabric effectiveness factor also is glass grid and the geo grid uh, also in the mix mode it variation is there. Also in geotextile you can see that effectiveness factor opening mode better, but in the mix mode you can see it is on the lower side. So, overall in the glass grid you can see a good got a good result in terms of the mix mode and as well as in terms of the opening mode. And this is you can see percentage of variation in F E F that positive that is, is increase the in F E A value and negative which increase that decrease of the F E A value. So, this factor also important. So, from this what we can discuss the differential deflection of 5 millimeter with zero load efficiency factor in mix mode of displacement is found to cause large cumulative decay of engineering parameters that is tensile force, stiffness modulus and shear modulus. Second, the conventional overlay with the base course or dense bituminous macadam and surface course of bituminous concrete does not arrest the crack propagation. Three, since the unnamed force OGSC overlay so BIEF of 2.253 in mixed mode of displacement, it is confirmed that it work as a crack relief arrester. Four, pet fiber reinforcement so base isolation effectiveness factor of 1.633, which is less than that of the unreinforced open gated asphalt concrete overlay and hence does not improve base isolation function of open gated asphalt concrete. Also the fabric effectiveness factor for pet fiber is 0 0.725, which is less than the one and therefore, does not provide then reinforcement benefit. So, you have to be careful that what kind of the material you should select and for what purpose. You can see how the uh, uh, fabric effectiveness factor uh, is less in, in case of the geotextile material and which is should not be less than 1 therefore, it cannot be used as a reinforcing material. Hence, 0.5 percent of paid fiber is not at all suitable quantity for 50 millimeter thick open gated as well concrete base course. 5. The polyester open geotextile reinforced open gated as well concrete overlay. So, the largest fabric effectiveness factor of 4.349 and the largest base isolation effectiveness factor of 7.8. 871 in opening mode of displacement. Hence, it is the best choice in purely opening mode of displacement. However, under mixed mode of displacement having 5 millimeter differential deflection with zero load efficiency factor, it shows the least base isolation effectiveness factor of 0 0.835 and the least fabric effectiveness factor of 0 0.371 confirming that it is not suitable under the mixed mode. Six, the glass grid 
reinforced open gated asphalt concrete overlay so the highest base isolation effectiveness factor of 7.316 and also with the highest fabric effectiveness factor of 3.247 under mixed mode of displacement. Thus, it is the best choice in the mixed mode of displacement. You can see that how the glass gate will be the more effective because his isolation effectiveness factor is more compared to the other material. 7, the polyester geogrid reinforcement open gated asphalt concrete overlay so the base isolation effectiveness factor of 3.139 and fabric effectiveness factor of 1.393 under mixed mode of displacement. It is the second best choice mixed mode of displacement. So, if the first choice is the glass grid, the second choice will be the polyester geogrid. Though polyester geogrid has 1.4 times higher tensile strain than that of the glass grid, its steepness is one third of the glass grid. The particular aspect confirm that steepness of the fabric played a vital role in reinforcing the overlay during differential deflection in mixed mode of displacement. So, we can observe that what kind of the geocentric material should use. So, we have performed with the different types of the geocentric material either in the form of the fiber, either in the form glass grid, either in the polyester geogrid, also in the open geotextile material and we find that what should be their, what should be their uh, isolation effective factor and BISA factor and what value you should particularly select for the particular project. You can have more detail of this in one in AC paper that is also written by Bosley and Mandel. We will address the geosynthetics in the, uh, in the railroad. You know that, that in the railroad how we can use the geosynthetic material. Geosynthetics are used in the railroad beneath the stone ballast upon which the wooden or the concrete tie system is placed. Now, what will be the different function of the geosynthetics material when you will use for the railway and what you can use, how you can solve the kind of the problem. There is a possibility for the separation problem and that you can use for the new railway construction where you can place the geotextile material between the in situ soil and the new ballast or the aggregate. Or in case of if it is required for the rehabilitation of the railway road, that means when the aggregate is all contamination, so you can place the geotextile material between the contaminated ballast and the new aggregate or new ballast. So, you can use that with the between the old and also the new ballast where you can use the geotextile material. So, what the geosynthetic material will act as a separation. <coughs> so, geosynthetic material can be used for the new railway construction. Also, geosynthetic material can be used for the rehabilitated the any railway or geotextile material act as a separation. Also, it has a confinement effect as a reinforcement because it can prevent the lateral the movement and there is a possibility for any filtration that what, what time this is a, there is development of the pore water pressure or there is a upper rising of the water where you can use this geocentric material which will act as a filtration and also there will be a lateral drainage. So, we will show that some of the site where 
geosynthetics can be used beneath or within the stone ballast and or the sub ballast layer for the construction of the new railway track or rehabilitation. You can use geotextile, geogrid, geocell, geocomposite and also the gabion are commonly used. Geocentric material can be used for multifunction, it can act as a separation, it can act as a filtration, it can act as a drainage, also it can act as a reinforcement. The primary function of the geocentrics is to separate the stone ballast and the subgrade soil. So, that is the primary function. Now, due to the dynamic wheel load of the railway, poor water pressure developed in the subgrade soil, it is required to dissipate the poor water pressure rapidly. The poor water pressure may be moved upward or due to the dynamic wheel load of the railway, then there is also a development of the poor water pressure on the subgrade. So, it is very much essential that how you can dissipate the poor water pressure rapidly. So, how the geosynthesis can help you to act as a filtration as well as drainage. So, geosynthetic lead over the subgrade soil can fulfill the required drainage and the filtration function. It is required to check adequate permeability of the soil retention, resistance to clogging and long term flow criteria of the geosynthetics before its practical application. We have already discussed about the flow related problem that it should solve that certain criteria, what should be the adequate permeability, what should be the retention criteria of the soil, what should be the resistance or the clogging criteria and so long term flow criteria. Now, geocomposite material can act both separation and the filtration. Upper side of the geotextile in a composite reinforcement require high abrasion resistance because it interact with the ballast stone. On the other hand, similarly lower side of the geotextile in a geocomposite reinforcement require adequate filtration because it interact with the very fine subgrade soil. You can see here, I can show you this is the railroad and this is the type and this may be made of the concrete or the wood and this is the ballast and this is the subsoil, the soil is soft. So, you can provide a layer of the geocomposite material in between the subsoil and the ballast stone. So, here you can see this is a geocomposite material. Now, this is one material and the top and the bottom is the geotextile material. So, that is why this is combination of the geogrid or the geonet or the open or non open geotextile material at the top and the bottom. That is why it is a geocomposite material. And this geocomposite material act as a separation. Now, you can see that upper side of the geotextile in the geocomposite reinforcement require high abrasion resistance because it interact with the ballast. So, it should satisfy the abrasion criteria. Similarly, in the bottom one you can see there is a filtration of very fine soil on the lower side against the subsoil. So, lower side of the geotextile in the geocomposite reinforcement required for adequate filtration because the soft soil is here and because it is interact with the very fine subgrade soil. So, here also in case of the filtration that poor water 
stress are rising up from the soil beneath the geotextile due to rising water or there is a possibility any dynamic pumping action of the individual wheel load. So, this geocomposite material will act as a filtration as well as the drainage. Also, there is a requirement something lateral drainage when the water entering from above or below the geocomposite material. So, here is another typical drainage system for railway track this is 2002 and you can see this is the railway, this is the sleeper and this is the ballast and you can provide with the geocomposite material and there is a trench geotextile drain with the wrap with and then when there is a soft soil or is here and there is a upward ground water flow and then you require proper kind of the geosynthesis material and this water can be drained it out through this drain or there is a rain or there is a surcharge drainage or ditch the all the water can pass through this trench material. So, this is a kind of the typical uh, uh, drainage system also can be used for any railway track. So, here also sometimes if you only provide with the geotextile material then below the soft soil you can provide also with the some sand drain because that geotextile material directly will not come in contact with the soft soil if you can put with a another separate layer here in below the sub uh, below the sub soil uh, subgrade then a few layer of the sand and then the geotextile material and on the top of that also you can provide with the some sand drain because the ballast should not directly come in contact with the geotextile material or alternatively you can provide with the geocomposite material. So, this kind of the also the drainage system is used for the railway track. So, geosynthetic reinforcement also provide lateral confinement, you can also use some um, kind of the gabion on the side near to the slope which can provide you the confinement effect, lateral confinement effect and it is very flexible and deform due to the dynamic load over the stone ballast through railway tie. Therefore, it does not easily fail to or form the slip surface. Filtration also mobilize between the stone ballast and the geosynthetics. It can keep the ballast stone in proper place. As reinforcement, geosynthetics can increase the load bearing capacity by better stage distribution as well as reduce the settlement. The issue is about the depth of the placement of geosynthetics below the railroad tie, high dynamic load imparts acceleration on the stone ballast and diminishes with the depth of the ballast. You can see here that how the geosynthetic material this white color has been used this below the this railway track. Raymond 1982 reported that damage take place at a depth of 200 millimeter. The minimum depth of for placement of the geosynthetics is 350 millimeter plus 50 millimeter track settlement that is at a depth of 400 millimeter. Check brush strength, abrasion resistance, graph tensile strength, drop contest, impact and puncture resistance of geosynthetics. Raymond 1982 recommended the resin dipped non oven needle punch very steep geosynthetics 1000 gram per meter square for rail load project. It can perform both separation and drainage function. The needle punch geosynthetics was used for the rehabilitation of Canadian railway track. The combination of geotextile and the geogrid was successfully used for the rail load track rehabilitation in USA. Geotextile acts as a separation and filtration. It prevent contamination of the ballast and release the quickly build up pore water pressure. Geogrid act as a very good reinforcement. There is a very good interlocking bonding or confinement effect 
between the ballast and the geogrid. As a result, it can resist the lateral and the vertical movement of the ballast as well as increase the bearing capacity of subgrade soil. The geocomposite material reduces the maintenance cost as well as the enhance the life of the railway track. You can see some railway track in the hilly area. Here is the hilly area with the proper drainage system and you can see one side that it is a hill you can provide with the kind of the cellular reinforcement and if the space is a shortest, so you can length can also be reduced or if there is any mountain and space is not enough, so you can provide with the cellular reinforcement. So, this is the railway track in a hill area where you can use the cellular reinforcement or if there is a erosion on the other side, then you can provide with the geo textile material, even the natural material and also the grass can grow here. And this is a railway track with the drainage system using the geogrid and the geotextile material. You can place the geogrid in between the subgrade and subgrade and there is a proper kind of the drainage system. This is the red one is the geotextile material and which will act as a separation, filtration as well as the drainage and also it act as sometimes the combination of the geogrid and the geotextile material material which it can be provided between the subgrade and subgrade where this geogrid can act as a separation and so as well as reinforcement. Similarly, the geotextile can act as a separation as well as the filtration and the drainage. This is another this railway track in the hilly area with proper geosynthetic drainage system and stabilized slope with cellular, cellular reinforcement. One side you can go for the cellular reinforcement, you can also provide the wrap around geotextile. So, we will discuss later how we will design the wrap around geosynthesis material here. So, this is another system where you can use the defined system. This railway track in the hilly area with proper geosynthesis, the drainage system and erosion control in slope and with the cellular reinforcement. You can provide the cellular reinforcement and then grass can grow here. Also, you can place only the geotextile material and this is the geotextile mat for the erosion control where also the grass can grow. So, you can make it more greenery. This is combination of the reinforced earth wall and the reinforced soil slope for the any railway track. If this is a railway, any the railway track and if this is a railway track, if there is a erosion, then you can provide with the geocentric material to control it. You can place the slope, then number of the layer of the reinforcement can be placed and it can make a more stable. And also, you, you can make a, make a road or the roadway here, where you can place this RD wall, reinforced soil wall. This is the number of the layer of geogrid material has been placed. So, you can construct the RE wall, what is called reinforced earth wall or you can make a steep slope using the geogrid material and what you can build up the also the railway. So, it is possible that any angle, any shape you can. This is another very useful, it has been used also in the Germany for the railway where the pile, this is combination of pile foundation and the geogrid reinforced embankment for the railway. So, this is this is the pile and pile cap and you can provide with the geogrid material in between the pile cap and also the embankment fill material and this will reduce the diameter of the cap and also it can reduce the space, uh, it can uh, uh, it can increase the spacing of the pile. So, because the geogrid material will act as a reinforcement. So, it can take the tension. So, on the top of this also you can construct the railway and it is very useful and it has been used also in many country including the Germany. This is land reclamation using the PVD in railway. So, what this, this is the PVD has been installed and then on the top of the embankment has been constructed and railway can be 
pass through this kind of the embankment. This construction for the railway embankment using the wrap around geogrid. You can wrap around the geogrid and can construct the slope and the railway line can be passed through this. Now, geo composite in railway track puncture failure in geotextile due to installation of the ballast abrasion failure of geotextile due to dynamic load require a specific abrasion resistant geotextile on the top side of the tightly fixed with the non-homing geotextile material. So, this is a I mentioned that how also the geocomposite material also can be prevent the abrasion and the puncture failure. This geocomposite also in the railway track this is a kind of the, uh, the tunnel what inside the tunnel this uh, this is a railway line. So, needle punch and non open geotextile here act as a drainage to drain it out the water and geo membrane you are placing here what geo membrane will act as the impermeable barrier to prevent the water from passing through it to the railway track. So, it is therefore, that any angular ballast stone with geotextile can act as a cushion. So, this geo, uh, cushion uh, this geotextile material will act as a cushion it can prevent that angular stone to damage this geomembrane material. If geomembrane material damage the water can penetrate it into the tunnel and then there will be a problem in the railway. So, on the top of this when the geotextile material switch it should be drained it out through this drain here. So, geotextile material act as a good drainage material and geomembrane material it is a impermeable material then water cannot penetrate it into this railway track and geotextile also act as a cushion for the geomembrane. Now, geosynthetics railroad foundation you can see that this is a multi layer of the geotextile with compacted aggregate to stabilize the railway foundation. What reinforcement aggregate raft can be used as a railway foundation to reduce and the redistribute the load on the soft low strength subgrade soil. You go for the mat which is very very expensive alternative to that you can provide with the multi layer of geogate with compacted that aggregate to stabilize the railway foundation bed. Now, another get this problem with the mud pumping under the railway track you can you can see here that this is the mud pumping under the railway track at the time of the, the railway wheel this is the railway wheel is over the sleeper. So, this is the this is the sleeper this is the ballast this is the railway track and this is the sub base this is the sub base. So, at the time the rail wheel is over the sleeper this is the sleeper the load act downward on the sub base this is the sub base this is the sub base load act downward on the sub base as a result the stone you can see here these are the stone the stone moved apart stone these are the stone which moved apart this all stone moved apart. As a result the stone moves apart both direction and created a void here is a void. So, void created as stone move apart under the wheel load on sleeper and second case when the wheel passes one sleeper to the other the later sleeper this sleeper moves upward it moves upward that means a pumping action it is move upward due to the pumping action as a result this stone this stone will try to close each other this is the stone which is try to close each other and mud pumping occurs in the upward direction to fill this void. So, 
that is why the mud move into the field, the void as wheel load passes. So, this is what is called the mump, mud pumping under the railway track. So, this happened and most of the time there will be kinds of the problem. So, water you can see here water stagnation in the railway track due to the mud pumping. So, you need control the mud pumping is difficult and prone to accident. Mud pumping can be prevented using the geocentric material. You can see you can place the geocentric material here and then mud pumping can be controlled. Also here that reinforcement sleeper bed in the railway, tubular, this is the polyester back filled with the rounded gravel in European railway after Van Janten 1986 or Van Sunderboard and Tourist 1986. This is tubular oven polyester bag are filled with the rounded gravel or locally available suitable material at a higher degree of compaction and tied with the railway sleeper by polyester strap. It can act as a reinforced sleeper bed. It has also been used, this is the polyester bag sealed with the rounded gravel and this is the, uh, 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 this, this is, you can say kind of the bag, slippery bed to bag with the polypropylene geotextile material. So, sleeper may be made of concrete, wood and steel. The bag can be made little bit flatter and anchored firmly with the sleeper. The bag can withstand heavy load without breaking or splintering of the filling material. Deformation of the bag is relatively less. The strength of the geotextile for the bag is 100 kN per meter and 120 kN per meter for the strap at a peak strain of 12 percentage. The design strength is calculated at 5 percent strain considering the factor of safety 4 that is given by Janten 1986, vibration due to passing of the train can be reduced. The maintenance cost will be also reduced. So, here this geosynthetics for the roadway repairing, you can see this is a distress pavement, this is the stone, this is the distress pavement and how you can rectify this distress pavement. You can, you can excavate and you can provide with the geo grid or the geotextile material and you can anchor the geo grid and geotextile and then you fill up with the stone, stone and then you can provide with the pavement on the top. Also you can repair using the geo grid geo cell, this is the geo grid geo cell and this is, is made of the geo grid or it may be the geo cell all combination. You can see this is the geo cell and this filled up with the stone and there will be uh, there, there will be no lateral also the deformation. It very give very good confinement effect or you can repair this kind of the problem using the geo grid geo cell or geo textile. You can also use the geo textile which can be anchored and then you can place this geofoam material on the top of this, this is the base course then and then the pavement. So, you can see different types of the material can be used. This is geocentrics for the roadway extension, if it is required for the extension any road, okay. this is the suppose existing road and you wanted to extend the road, what you can provide with the geofoam or the geocell for the road road a widening at both side of the existing road. You can, if this is the existing road here, you can extend it with the new road by the inclusion of the geoform geocell or the geogrid geocell material. So, you can extend the road like this. Also, the geoform or geocell for road a widening on one side, if you want this is the existing road and if you want it to widening on the other side of the road, so this is the new road by you can include the geocell or the geofoam material. Also geofoam block on the roadway widening at both the side of the existing, if the existing road 
then you can road the new road you can provide with this here like this. So, you can use it and geopom block roadway widening at one side of the existing road. If the situation is like this what you can place the geopom it is very easy to place the geopom and you can widening and then you fill up with the soil and the grass can grow. So, you can make a new road. So, summary is the correct choice specification and installation of geosynthetics. Improvement in performance of the roadway, runway and the railway. It is a cost effective solution, increase the life span of the structure, reduce the maintenance cost. Now, stabilization of pavement using nano material. This is a we have done the number of the compaction test and different percentage of the cement and the nano zinc oxide were mixed with the power soil and compaction test have been carried out. Test result indicated the reduction in maximum dry density with increase of the optimum water content while compared the only soil. You can, you can see uh, here that you can see the here this is the uh, CBR, CBR mold and which we have performed the test. This is the nano zinc, uh, nano zinc oxide material also has been included and we find that uh, different uh, types of the fly ash and also cement which has been used. So, in case 1 that soil and 2 percent cement and 0.1 percent nano zinc oxide material has been used and case 2 also soil 4 percent cement and 0.2 percent nano zinc oxide has been used and case 3 soil plus 6 percent cement plus 0.3 percent nano zinc oxide has been used. So, this is one of the sample the world the, the test has been performed and you can see it is a very very hard you can see it can very very hard. Okay. So, I will show you some of the compaction test result. If you draw the dry density versus the moisture content and what is happening in case of the conventional soil and, and in case of when you are introducing this cement and the nano zinc oxide material and what is happening. This, this is the slide so that compaction curve of the pi soil and soil mixed with soil mixed with the soil mixed with the different percentage of the cement and nano zinc oxide material. So, you look at this curve in an iso in uh, in an uh, it is it is uh, noted from this this optimum moisture content here and dry density is here optimum moisture content is increasing for the treated soil, but maximum unit weight is decreasing. Hence, the additional of the cement and the nano zinc oxide material which will act as a additive would require more water. You can see you require for the more water for the treated soil. Moreover, more water is needed to reach the optimum compaction state. The maximum water content of treated soil with nano zinc oxide is slightly reduced. That means, that optimum moisture content is treated soil increase because more water is necessary to lubricate, more water is necessary to lubricate the particle and thereby reach an optimum state. Quantity of nano zinc oxide added to the soil is small. The effect of the nano zinc oxide is less noticeable on the compaction. So, nano zinc oxide increase, more water is needed. In the meantime, both the in the meantime, 
both the maximum unit weight and the die density matrix decrease slightly as more nano zinc oxide is added to the soil. So, die density of the mixture is observed to be in the range of 16.6 .6 to 17.6 kilo Newton per meter cube and most of the mixture satisfy the MORTH 2001 criteria for the use of embankment construction. So, we can see that how the nano zinc oxide material with the cement can be used and what you can energy you can save with respect to the normal conventional soil material. This is California bearing ratio test and this California bearing ratio test was also carried out as per ISO 2720 parts 16, 1987 on only power soil and soil mixed with the cement and nano zinc oxide at different portion. So, here test are detail given that this is the test data for the penetration, this is CBR, this is soil only and this is soil with 2 percent cement 0.1 percent nano zinc oxide soil plus 4 percent cement plus 0.1 percent nano zinc oxide, soil plus 6 percent cement plus 0.1 percent nano zinc oxide. You can see here that how this, uh, this uh, CBR value is increasing with the introduction of the cement and the minimum amount of the nano zinc oxide. So, here you can see that this is about 32, 32.1, it is about 85.8 and 79 percentage of the CBR value with respect to the soil 8.032, to 8.88. So, what we find that most specification for road and the bridge work in 2001 criteria that CBR value generally 20 to 30 percent for use in the sub base layer for roadway. So, what has here it has been observed that this CBR value is much much on the hard side and then we can use the small amount of the nano zinc oxide material which will be very useful for the use and it can also satisfy this criteria or specification. Now, we have conducted also the unconfined compression strength test. And this is the test condition, this is for the 7 days, 14 days curing, then 28 days curing and soil alone is unconfined compression strength value is coming about 2.09 to 2.10 and after 28 days 2.50, whereas when you add the soil plus 2 percent cement, 0.3 percent nano zinc oxide it is 2.62 kg per centimeter for 7 days curing, 3.43 for 14 days curing and 4 kg per centimeter square for 28 days curing. Soil plus 4 percent cement plus 0.3 percent nano zinc oxide that it is 14.96 for 7 days, 14 days 17.06 and 28 days 17.5. For that soil plus 6 percent cement and 0.3 percent nano zinc oxide this is 26.96, 29.22 and 35.5 kg per centimeter square for 28 days given. So, use of the treated soil increase as the amount of cement also this increases or when we add the 0.3 percent of nano zinc oxide then because for nano zinc oxide serve to speed up the hydration reaction and act as a filter to pores in treated soil that is why the unconfined compressive strength of this material is improved. When cure is for the 14 days, this use is also this increasing. You can see from 17 then it is increasing since 29.2 and also 21 days is increasing from 17.5 to 35.5. So, this result could be due to the fact that because of the nano zinc oxide material 
require higher water absorption. The moisture content of the soil of 0.3 percent nano zinc oxide added is relatively less. What this lead to insufficient water to support the hydration reaction in the soil for extended curing. In case of the rural road as per the IRC code specification unconfined compressive strain of the cement stabilized material at 14 days should not be exceed than 17.5 kg per centimeter square what cement require about 2, 5 to 7 percentage. So, here you can see that when you add only 4 percent cement and 0.3 percent cement which is satisfying this criteria or this specification. So, pavement construction with alternative material as the quality of the aggregate is now becoming scarcity due to the local restriction and environmental problem alternative large scale locally available material can be used for the construction of the flexible pavement. This kind of the system is now going around the world and also in India we are now trying and have so been very small way have been introduced. The recycling of the reclaimed asphalt pavement can be used as alternative material for the pavement design because this area a lot of research work is still need, needed. IIT Bombay also carrying out some research work in this related area. The gradation of the wrap can be mixed with the new suitable material and adhesive to produce an alternative new material which can be used for the base or sub base and or as a new binder material. The cost of bitumen is also increasing enormously. The use of the wrap can reduce the cost for IOA construction. More quantity of aggregate is required for the construction of granular base, sub base flexible pavement. As per the Indian Road Congress guideline, the thickness of the base course is about 250 millimeter and thickness of the sub base is about 200 millimeter to 300 millimeter based on traffic requirement and sub gauge strength. Using the appropriate geosynthetics, it is possible to reduce the thickness of the granular base and sub base for similar or even better performance. In addition, reclamation asphalt pavement and reclaimed concrete pavement can be recycled as base and sub base material, thereby reducing the require of the virgin aggregate for the same. It will lead to innovation in design and construction for the road in substantial and environmental friendly way at a lesser cost with the better performance. It is appreciated that provision of the rain water harvesting is made compulsory in road projects specially on BOT build, operate and transport. The use of appropriate geosynthetics in this process would yield better result. Appropriate design, selection of the material, execution are essential to achieve the desired result. So, you can use wrap material, whatever the recycled material, whatever the waste material and also we are carrying out with some the waste material with nano material where the asphalt is very, very expensive. Where the alternative system can be minimized the thickness of the asphalt and cost can be used and you can make a green road. So, with this I ended up this today's lecture. Please let us hear from you any question. Thanks for listening.